All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, the In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Today is a beautiful day. It's an exciting day. But, man, it's also a gloomy day here in Palmdale. But nevertheless, man, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. So do me a favor. Share, like, tag, invite, start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate you this morning for doing so. So do that for us today. Hey, big shout out to those who are tuning in on Instagram, those who are tuning in on Facebook Live today. Thank y'all so much for being on. Shout out to my wife, Pastor Sophia, who's on this morning. Shout out to Miss Willie Francis Hill today. Shout out to my daughter, Ashley, is on this morning. Love me some you, boo-boo. Thank you so much for being on today. I appreciate you guys. Miss Ronnie Copeland is in the house. Good to see you. Miss Bambi is in the house. Good to see you, Miss Bambi. Love you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all do us a favor. Share, like, tag, get invite, start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perry. But as you can see, we are really in the backyard today. I kind of should have been in the house this morning, to be honest with you. It's kind of gloomy out here. Uh, sun is trying to come out this morning. That, that's the thing about, the unique thing about doing the In the Backyard. You don't know how the weather is going to be. So that's the unique thing. But nevertheless, thank y'all so much for being on. Shout out to Miss Sheila T. Rowe and Miss Shirley Powell is in the house. Miss Shirley Powell, Miss Shirley Powell, Miss Shirley Powell. <laughs> it's with us today. Good to see you and thank you so much for tuning in. So I need y'all to share. I need y'all to like. I need y'all to tag. I need y'all to invite. I need you to get your coffee, your water, your juice, your tea, or whatever you're drinking. Get it today and be on this morning. Let's have a good time. Hey, and my auntie, my auntie Dorothy Perryman, the greatest of all time, she's the goat of all teachers, is on today. So shout out to her. Miss Battery Hankins is in the house. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So listen, let me get some of this coffee that my wife made. You get yours today, and we're going to have a good time in the Lord, all right? Yeah, this coffee good. It's saved. It's sanctified. Good morning, Sister Ruth. Let's get to it today. You know, I, I really, 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 really don't have a big story uh, this morning. I was kind of searching my brain, racking my brain about what story I wanted to add today. But then I realized, or I thought about it, I should just say what God said to me. I woke up this morning, and it's around 5 o'clock this morning, and, and I tell myself, man, you, you're 35 minutes late for prayer. Get up get up, get up, I had to sit on the side of the bed, get myself together, and then I go into my closet and I'm in prayer. But when I wake up this morning, I could see in my spirit these words, I won't let, and there's a line, I won't let this situation, I won't let my, and there's a line, control me again. As I'm going into the, my closet to pray this morning, I'm kind of asking God about that line. What is, what is that line? And he's saying to me, when, when, you, when you minister to the people this morning, let them fill in the line. That I won't let my, and whatever my situation is, I won't let it control me anymore. O only you know what's controlling you. Only you know what's hindering you. Only you know what has a stronghold in your life. Only you know what's been holding you back. Only you know what's been your pet peeve. Only you know the situation and the circumstance that has bothered you. Only you know. And today is the day that you fill in that blank this morning and, and you say, I won't let my, whatever it is, if it's my anger, control me anymore. I, I won't let my unfaithfulness control me anymore. I won't let insecurity, I won't let frustration, I won't let something that happened to me in the past, I won't let the past, the pain of my past control me anymore. I won't let it control me anymore. I won't let it control me anymore. Because here's what the devil wants to do to you. The Bible tells us that he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And the way that he kills, steals, and destroys, he does it through the controlling of your mind. And if he can plant seeds of doubt in your mind, if he could plant seeds of hatred in your mind, if he could plant seeds of insecurity, if he could plant seeds of frustration, if he could plant all kinds of negative seeds in your mind, then he controls you. But you have to be the one to step up to the plate today and say that I won't let my health challenges control me anymore. 
I, I won't let my insecurities, won't let pain in the past, won't let my financial situation, I, I won't let what other people said about me. Only you know what that line, what should go in that line. Only you know what should go in it. Because you're the one that battles with it every single day. You're the one. You battle with it every day. Maybe it's a particular person on your job, and, and maybe you just have to write their name in today and say, I won't let Nana Nisha Nim control me today. I, I won't let Jose, I, I won't let him control me today. You understand? I won't let Mary control me. I won't let Dana control me. You understand? I won't let none of that control me today. And maybe you may just have to write, I won't let the neighborhood that I live in control me today. I won't let it control me in today. You, maybe, maybe that's what you have to do, that you have to write this thing in. And, because to write it in is to say, I'm addressing you now. I done given you a name and I'm addressing you now. I'm not going to let you control me anymore. The, the words that maybe my mother said about me years ago, I won't let that control me. Maybe the words that a teacher said about you years ago that affected you, I won't let that control me anymore. I will not allow <laughs> my situation or my circumstance to control me. You, you know only you know what it is. Only you know what it is. And for some of you, it's been plaguing you for so long. And you've been held hostage by it. I won't let my divorce control me any longer. And some of you just may have to write your own name there. That, that I won't let me control me any longer. Because for many of you, you've come to Christ. You've given your, Christ, your life to Christ. But here's what you have not done. You have not resigned your will to the will of God. For some of you, when on that line, you need to just write on the line to God, I resign my will to your will. I submit a letter of resignation to you today saying that I cease trying to control my life because I've been the one that's been at fault. Everything that I have done has not been right, has not measured up because I've been trying to do it myself. I've been my own worst nightmare. I've been my own worst enemy. I've been my own blessing blocker. I've been my own door that has closed. I've been that. And so today is the day that I submit a letter of resignation saying, God, I resign my will to your will, and I won't let my will control me any longer. I'm submitted to your will. I'm talking to somebody today because that there's a place now that, that, that God wants to take you. But in order for him to take you there, you have to relinquish control. And there are people who are watching me today that you refuse to relinquish control because after all, I've been in control for a long time. It's the equivalent of here you are, you've been a single mother all your life, you, you've been single all your life and you get this man and it ain't worked out, but you've been having to handle business and control things all along and then finally God sends you a good man. But you don't want to relinquish control because after all, I've been doing this all myself all my life. I know what I'm doing. And so now there's a friction in your relationship because you won't relinquish control. You ought to think something about this. You all think about this this way. The Bible asks the, the Bible says, he that finds that the wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. Okay, watch now. So that means you got to take a look at yourself. That if the man found me, he found his good thing. If the man found me, he found his favor connection. If the man found me, it's because God put him in my way. And, and if the man found me, it's because God answered my prayers. So if God has given him to me, I, 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 I ought to be able to relinquish some control. I'm talking to somebody today because you, you may be married today, but you're still bumping heads because you, you don't realize that, that, you, that just because you lead on the job don't mean you run him. I'm talking to somebody today because you don't know how to turn the switch off. You don't know how to turn the switch off. And so here you are. You are in the way. So you have to say, I'm not going to allow my strong-willed emotion to control me any longer because when you allow your strong-willed emotion to start to control you, it affects everything and everybody around you because you're so strong-willed. You don't know when to turn it off. You don't know when to turn it on. Your light switch is always on. Your, your strong-willed emotion is always on. You don't know when to shut it off. You don't know when to be quiet. You don't know when to stop talking. It is always on. May I tell you today that if God has opened up the door to give you what it is you asked for, that he's giving you someone that can lead for real. I'm talking to those who are married. You are bumping heads left and right. You are bumping heads left and right because you will not relinquish control. To relinquish control doesn't mean that you're not an authority figure. To relinquish control doesn't mean that you're not in control. I'm talking to somebody today. It doesn't mean that you're not in control. 
All right. I was having a conversation with, with one of my spiritual daughters uh, uh, a few weeks ago, and I'm talking to him, and, and I'm saying, see, you, you're strong will, and you're strong will, and, and that's you. That's your makeup. That's who you are. You're strong will. You, 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 you strong will. You ain't going to take no crap from nobody. You're not going to let nobody push you over. This is who you are. This is your makeup. Okay, but here's the thing. You have to learn to turn this stuff off. You can be in control without making it look like you in control. He says, spiritual dad, how I do that? I said, let me give you an example. When I was working for the Marriott Hotel and I was responsible for a team of people that, that was under me for, for in front office or whatever, here, here's what I had to do. They told me at the end of the year, you got this team, you got to make sure you get an evaluation done of this team. And we need your evaluation done and we need it done by this particular date. So they gave me some months to get this evaluation done. So here, here's what I did. I called my team together. I said, hey, you guys know that I have to have an evaluation done on each one of you. This evaluation is going to talk about your job performance, but at the same time, I'm going to ask you personal questions like, what's your favorite color? You understand what type of gifts do you like? So when it comes down to a birthday celebration or something, the job will be able to give you certain things that you like, not things that you don't like. And they said, okay, we understand. I said, so I'm going to be calling some of you uh, one by one throughout the week to meet with you. When I call them in my office and sit them down, I said, okay, listen, again, you know I have to get these evaluation done. And uh, so I already ran through what it is I need to do with you. I have these three days available. Which one would you like to choose? And so they look at it. Oh, oh, this day works for me. Watch now. I gave them the illusion that they were in control that they chose. But the reality is I chose for them. I'm talking to somebody today. See, you can be in control and not make it look like you're in control. So here I am. I got these evaluations. I got these days. Which one would you like? You choose one. So they're choosing the day. They made it feel like they chose the day. It fit their schedule. But the reality is I chose the days because they fit my schedule. I'm talking to somebody today. See, you can learn to relinquish control and still be in control. I'm talking to somebody today because you don't know how to turn the light switch off. You are always in control because you have always had to be in control. You have always had to be the boss. You have always had to be the leader. And so now here God gives you someone and you don't know how to stop being in control. And it causes criticism in your home. It causes frustration in your home. Your wife is telling you, hey, okay, now you can't do this here. The husband is telling you, okay, you got to stop. I'm not one of the people that work for you and you are still not listening. And so now you are your line. Maybe you need to write your name on your line that I will not, I won't let me control me anymore. I won't let me control our relationship anymore. I won't let me get in the way of our relationship anymore. I won't let me. You have to learn how to let some things go. And there are many people today who are watching me that you have not confronted your issues. And it's your issues that's holding you back. Sometimes the real enemy is in a me. He's within me. I told y'all yesterday that, that that's, you know, let's just be realistic. That's two or three of y'all that's living inside of one body. That's two, three people living in one side of the body. Depending on what side of the bed you wake up in the morning will determine which one of them coming out. Depending on what somebody said to you that day throughout the work will, will determine which one of them person coming out of there. There's about four or five people that live up in Redmond, okay? If you push the wrong button, you may get some stuff you ain't gonna like. So, so I have to make sure that I pray for me. I have to tell God, Lord, help me today. Help me to keep my mouth. Help me to keep my mind. Help me to keep my mannerism. Help me to keep the mantle that you gave me, God. Help me to keep it. Help me not to mess this thing up because, God, you know I will say some stuff that I ain't got no business to say. So help me put a muzzle on my own mouth so that I don't block the blessing flow that you gave me. And I got to be, I got to be honest with you, sometimes it's hard for Reverend. It's hard for Reverend because cause that, 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 that imaginary line that I have drawn in the sand. And all of a sudden now, you start to get close to the imaginary line and I start to bark. You know, like, you know, a dog in the yard, and he starts to sense like you coming. He's he, he coming down the street, so he starts to bark to let you know, this is my yard, don't come over here. And so I, I had to ask God to help me because I start barking. Oh, oh, you know, oh, oh. <laughs> let me quit playing. I start barking, okay, you're getting too close. So I started to say things like, okay, I'm done with the conversation. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. And that, that's, that's a warning shot that you, you're getting too close to the line now. And, 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 and I'm not going to be responsible for what come out next. So you're getting too close to the line. And so, so now as you get closer and closer to the line, my, my response is, okay, now, I done told you already. You're getting too close. And so then the next thing you know, when you enter into the yard, 
Here come the submachine Uzi. Here come the Uzi submachine gun. Everything coming out of there. Everything that's in the clip is coming out of there because there's so many folk up in here. So I have to wrestle with things. I have to ask God, help me to have me together. Help me to get me together. Help me to get my mouth together. Help me to get my mannerism together, God. Help me to keep my mantle, God. Help me to have my mind together, God. Help me because sometimes the real enemy is in me. And if you don't learn how to confront you, you will always be controlled by your situation. You, 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 you always be controlled by your situation. Your situation will control you. Only you know what your situation is. I will not be controlled by my worrying anymore. For some of you, you worry so much that worry lives in the house with you. It sleeps in the bed with you. It, it gets his mail at your house. It's got its own telephone line in your house. It, it, just, it just has everything set up. It, it buys its own groceries in your house. It cooks in your house when it gets ready because worry creeps upon you when you're not even prepared for it and when you're not even thinking about it. And worry is just simply you imagining a problem happening when it has not happened yet. I, I don't know how this thing gonna work. How am I gonna work? How am I gonna figure this out? They said that we ain't gonna get no stimulus check. How am I gonna pay my bill? Oh my God, I'm off of work. I, this is happening and that is happening. What am I gonna do? You're gonna shut up and stop worrying. You're gonna put on this line today. I will not allow worry to control me today. I won't let my worry control me today. I won't let my emotions to control me today. I won't let my insecurities control me. I won't let the pain of my past control me. I won't let any of this control me today because it's your way of getting free. Got health challenges, Pastor. The doctor gave me a bad report. Told me I had this breast cancer thing, this lung cancer thing. I got tested from the job and they said I got this COVID thing. And, and now, Pastor, my body is feeling weak. My granddaddy used to say, I feel a little peaky. I feel a little peaky. I feel my body is weak. I can't get up and move around like I used to. I, I, I just can't do the things that I used to, Pastor. I'm just a little tired. I'm a little sore. And, 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 and I'm, just, I'm just not the same anymore. And this thing is bugging me. Well, you're going to write on your line today that I'm not going to let this COVID-19 control me any longer. I'm not going to let it control me any longer that, that I'm going to use this thing to my advantage. What you mean, Pastor, I'm going to use it to my advantage? Well, if that means I'm at home and I need to get some bed rest, maybe you need to get some rest. Maybe you need to just stay in the bed and rest all day long. Uh, maybe you need to put your Twitter fingers down. Maybe you need to put your Facebook gossiping down. Maybe you just need to rest for a little bit. Get in the bed. Cover up. You're not going to die. You're not going to lose your mind just because everybody else is dying around you. You're going to write on your line today that I'm not going to let my health challenges control me anymore. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to believe the report of the doctor, but I'm going to believe the report of the law. So I'm not going to let the doctor's report control me any longer. I I'm going to let the word of the Lord control me. You have to get to a place in your life where you say, I cease from all of my laboring. Laboring is worrying about how you're going to make ends meet and how you're going to come out and how you're going to get to the next phase of your life. So you have to make it a point today to say, I'm not going to let, and only you know what your situation is, control me any longer. Only you know. For some of you, it's your children and your children are controlling you. You can't enjoy your life because you're too busy spending for them. You can't enjoy your life because you keep giving all your stuff to what you have to your grandchildren and things like that. Well, I'm going to write on my line today. Uh, I'm not going to let little Dr. Nicanel, that little Dada, he's not going to control me this, this month. I, I'm not buying no, no more Xbox, no PS4, no PS5. I ain't buying no $200 Jordans. I don't care. Hey, you better go find your daddy. I'm not, finna buy, I'm not letting little Dada control me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not letting a little nene control me anymore. I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm not going to let this control me anymore. See, some of you have to just take the opportunity, write this down. I'm not going to let this control me. I had to get to a point to where I had to say, I'm not going to let the church world control me anymore. I'm not going to let it control me anymore. Because the church world said I had to dress a certain way. The church world said I had to, I had to, I had to walk a certain way. I had to, I had to wear this on the first Sunday. I had to wear a robe on the first Sunday with a collar on the first Sunday. And I was doing that stuff back in 2010 and all the way up until around 2013. And I said, man, Reb, Reb, I'm coming out this white doggone collar for real. I'm coming out this, I'm pulling off this doggone collar. I'm taking off this doggone robe type thing. I'm taking all this mess off because this don't have nothing to do with me giving God glory and God praise. 
today. I had to get to a point to say, I I'm coming to church with some tennis shoes on today. I'm finna put these Stacey Adams up back up in the closet. You understand? I'm finna put these Giorgio Brew tennis shoes back up in the closet. And Reverend finna put on some 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 Nikes and go on to church. Reverend finna put on some Tommy Hill figure clothes and go on, on to church. I'm finna pull out these Jordans and go on, on to church. You understand? I'm finna, I ain't finna be worried about this religious stigma that everybody trying to put on me. I I'm finna come out of this mess. And there are many of you who are watching me today. You have allowed so many things to control you. You have to say that I'm not going to allow society's opinion of me to control me. Because society tells you whether you are plus size or not. Mm. Here you are. You weigh 120 pounds and you... You, you five foot 11, 120 pounds, and, and, and you walk in the grocery store and all of the magazines tell you you, you you overweight, you plus size. You turn the television on and the television commercial tell you that you overweight. You're not overweight. You hungry. You need a sandwich. You need a sandwich. You need a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You need a steak and some potatoes. You skinny. You need some. You need something to eat. You understand? What I'm saying? You need a sandwich. You need a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich with some protein in it. You need some good scrambled eggs. You need. You need some. You need some good. You you need some good potatoes. You understand? With the gravy. With the gravy, not to come out of the package, but the gravy you made at home with the grease and the flour and cut up onion. You need some of that because you need. You losing weight. You skinny, you, you need to, you cannot be looking at the magazines and the magazines is trying to tell you that you skinny. And you've been allowing the world's opinion to control you. And all of a sudden, now here you are trying to measure up to that. Starving yourself to death, eating kale. You know you don't like kale, but you're eating all of this stuff trying to be happy, trying to get your body together. You, you, better, you better stop watching all this stuff on television and enjoy you. Maybe you do need to lose some weight for health problems, for health challenges. Okay, that's fine. Go on to the gym, work out, eat healthy because you need to, because you're trying to benefit you. I ain't finna let the world control me and tell me what's cute and what's not cute. Plus size ain't no 125 pounds. Plus size ain't no 150 pounds. You need a sandwich. Let me say it again. You need a sandwich, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You need some steak and some potato with some real gravy. You understand? You you need you need some baked chicken. You need you you you, you need some fried chicken. You 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 need some salmon. You understand? You need some catfish. You need some hush puppy. That's what you need at this moment. Some pinto beans, some collard greens, and cornbread. So you can get some weight on you. That's what you need because you're too busy letting society tell you you have to put on your line today. I'm not letting society control me anymore. For those of you who are watching me this morning and you ain't got no daddy, your daddy ain't been in your life, you maybe not even know who your daddy is, you got to write on this, on your list today, I'm not going to allow the lack of me having a father to control me any longer. No, I'm not going to let that happen. My dad was never in my life, so I'm not going to let that control me any longer. I'm breaking free from this. I'm stepping out. I'm being what God has called me to be because God says that he's, been, he's a father to the fatherless. He's a friend to the friendless. So, so God has been my father all the time. So I'm going to write that on there that I'm not going to let not having a father control me any longer. You, you got to start writing on your list. I'm not going to let not having a husband, not having a boyfriend, not having a wife, not having a girlfriend control me any longer. I'm not going to let that control me any longer. You have to put that down because if you don't put this down and you don't start addressing it, if you don't start attacking it, it will continuously keep attacking you. And so here you are stuck like a truck in the mud and this situation is attacking you every day. Just when you thought you had a handle on it, here comes the devil. He comes with thoughts in your head. You're moving good. You're working good. You're, everything is working right in your life. And then all of a sudden he causes all hell to break loose in your life. He starts to bring thoughts into your head. Mm. Remember, see that Christmas time is coming up and everybody is getting gifts and I ain't got no gift. I ain't. Nobody, nobody bought a gift for me. Every time I turn around, I'm in the same situation every year. Every year, I'm in the same situation every year. I can't win for losing. I can't, can't win for losing. Every time I turn around, I got to pay all these bills, and, and, and I ain't got nothing to buy. Little bro, Nick and them, no, 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 Christian, no, no Christmas gift. I, I can't buy little Sancho Johnson them no gift or stuff. I want to, but I, I, I ain't got no money to do it. Have you ever stopped to think that maybe your gift is your lights is on? 
Hey, have you ever stopped to think that maybe your gift is your gas is on? Have you ever stopped to think that maybe your gift is your, your water is on? Have you ever stopped to think that maybe the gift is that you got a place to sleep, that you ain't outside tonight, that you can go get in your bed? Have you ever stopped to think that maybe the gift is the covers on your bed that you are able to cover up at night, that you're not able to, you're not, you, you don't have to sleep on the street corner at night, on the bus bench or anything like that? Have you ever stopped to think that maybe, 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 let me say it again, that maybe a gift is you are able to walk and open up the refrigerator refrigerator door and look in the refrigerator and say, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll have this today or you got your choice or something. Have you ever stopped to think about that, that you could open up the pantry and look in the pantry? You may not have a, a pantry full of stuff, but there is some stuff up in there. Have you ever stopped to think that maybe a gift to you at this season right now in your life is that you can breathe? Have you ever stopped to think that maybe a gift for you at this moment is that you are not on a ventilator today? Have you ever stopped to think that maybe a gift for you is that you could go outside and Unlock your car door, sit in it, and maybe put your kid in ignition and turn it off. Put your foot on the brake and hit the button and the car start and you got a job to go to? Have you ever stopped to think that? But here's what the devil does. He makes you focus on things that may not be that important. So here you are, stuck like a truck in the mud. and So now you're depressed in a season that you should not be depressed in at all. Christmas is not about your children. Christmas ain't even about the gifts that you're giving people. Christmas is about the gift that God gave you to redeem your life from destruction, to satisfy you with long life. It's about the gift that he gave the world. We got this thing in reverse, so here you are tripping. I, 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 and you know, little Tata and them, they want, they want this, and little Tata and them want that. Well, little Tata and them can get this when they get a job. When little Tata grow up and get a job, little Tata can get, can get this on her own. But at this moment, I got to stay within my means. You understand? Right now, the stimulus check ain't kicked in. So, little Tata, you got to wait. I, I, right now, mama ain't working. Grandma ain't working at this moment right now. COVID done shut my job down. So, I got to wait. You got to wait. I don't want to hear no temper tantrums or none of that. Go in the room, go sit down, or go home to your mama, to your daddy. Some of you just need to just put on this list today. I won't let my emotions control me any longer. Everybody else is booed up for Christmas. Everybody else. I go to the parties with them. I go to their house parties that they have. And, and they, they all sitting under there with their boyfriends and their wives and their girlfriends. I ain't got nobody. I just feel so depressed. Well, stay your butt at home. Don't go over there. You already know that they got their booze over there. You ain't got one. You already know you're going to feel depressed. So what you going over there for in the first place? Why would you subject yourself to being depressed like that? Why would you put yourself in a situation where you're going to come out of there feeling hurt and feeling pain? Why don't you just stay at home and, and sit down and watch you some Christmas stories? You understand? Watch it. Watch It's a Christmas life or whatever the case may be. Or root off the Red Nose Ranger. Why don't you just stay away from over there? If you stay out of there, you won't have to worry about all of this. You just stay away from over there. You, you understand? In this COVID-19, you need to stay away from over there anyway and just enjoy your life. I'm talking to somebody today. You are the reason in many cases that you're going through some of the things that you're going through because you keep putting yourself in that situation. If I know I'm going to be depressed when I get over there, what am I going over there for in the first place? And the other part of the, corner, the other side of the corner, you don't know what their relationship is like. Folks always give you the illusion that they got it going on. Look on Facebook. Folks take pictures and it's full of filters. You know sister girl don't look like that. You know brother man don't look like that. They done put all kinds of filters on them to make them look good. And when you meet them in person, you're like, whoa, that's you. That ain't what I seen on, that ain't what I seen on this show. That, that's not what I seen on Instagram. That is not what I seen on Facebook. That is not what it is. You, 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 you what? That ain't you. It can't be you. Because what I see over here is not that you take your phone and you start comparing. See, that, that's you. you. You don't know what's going on in folks' lives. So you, you cannot allow the world to control you. You cannot allow the world's opinion of you control you. You cannot allow the thoughts of other people to control you. So today is the day you say, I take my power back. I'm not going to allow. And that line is there. You have to write down what's been controlling you for a long period of time. For some of you, it's more than one thing that's been controlling you. It's people's opinion that's been controlling you. It's the words of other people that's been controlling you. It's a divorce that's controlling you. I can't believe he walked out on me and left me. We said we were going to build a life together and he left me. How could he do me like that? I thought that she loved me. How could she cheat on me? How could, how could she just say that we fell out of love? How? And you've been letting this stuff control you all these years.
A day is the day that you say, I'm not going to allow my, whatever it is, my emotions, my financial problems, my pain, the pain of my past, my health challenges, my relationships, my, my relationship with my children. I'm not going to allow any of this to control me ever again. I'm coming out of this. And I'm coming out of this on top. I'm not going to let this control me anymore. Today is the day that you let it go. I'm not going to allow the abuse that I experienced at the hand of a man or at the hand of a woman control me any longer. There's some of you on here today, you have been through domestic violence and it is still controlling you. It won't let you love the way you want to love because you still remember the abuse. When God gives you a man, uh, uh, you, you see somebody that you, you kind of like and they kind of like you, you hesitant because of what you've been through. You have to say, I'm not going to allow this to control me any longer. I can't let it control me any longer. I can't let it control me. I got to live the second half of my life. I got to live this next chapter of my life. I got to complete this chapter of my life so that I can get into the next chapter. God's got great things in store for me, but I can't even turn the page until I finish dealing with the issues that are here. So I, so I write it down on my thing today. I'm not going to allow my and you got to write it down on the line. Control me any longer. That, that's my time right there today. I pray you were encouraged. I pray you were encouraged today. I pray you were strengthened and motivated today. I'm, <laughs> I can't tell y'all where I get half of this stuff from. This stuff just pops up into my head. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to decipher it while it pops up into my head. <laughs> <laughs> certain things I'm trying to weed out as it was with my head. My, my brain works funny style. Like my brain is constantly moving all the time. Like I, I don't really sleep a lot because I'm constantly thinking, how can I do this? How can I do that? Just thoughts running in my head all the time to the point I have to write down thoughts and everything because it's it just, it's just moving in my head like that. I don't know. I'm, uh, I think differently, I guess I, I'm not a good note taker. So I'm a person who has to, who teaches himself how to remember everything. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, you know, maybe I'm dyslexic backwards. I, I don't know. But anyway, that's just how my brain works. You know, it's just, it's, I work, it works funny style. <laughs> so y'all pray for me. <laughs> y'all pray for me. <laughs> Listen, let me give some shout outs to people today. Hey, shout out to Miss Tiffany Barnes who's on today. Miss T Love is on today. Shout out to Miss Angie Marion who's on today. Miss Terry Parham is rocking with us today. Girl, you know you got most skills and Kalos got corn flakes. You be the bomb, baby. So good to see you this morning too. Miss Willie Francis Hill, you know she is all of that and a bag of chips. So shout out to her today. You know, Miss Shamika Bogard is rocking with us today. You know, she's a model extraordinaire. She's an entrepreneur. She's a preacher, ghost writer, rapper, all of that. She's all of that too. So shout out to her. Thank you so much for being on. Hey, my spiritual daughter, Miss Bam, is in the house today. Love me some Bam. Shout out to her. Uh, school is out right now. So Miss Jackie Hankins is on today. So shout out to her. Thank you so much, sweetheart, for being on today. Minister Kim Simmons is in the house. Love me some Kate, some Kim Simmons. So shout out to her. Thank you so much for being on today. Miss Jennifer Smith, I must give you my pound. So shout out to you. Mr. Velo Wright is in the house. So shout out to you. Uh, I think I saw Mr. Salilo uh, Jones on today. Shout out to you too. And thank you so much for tuning in this morning. And last but not least, uh, I saw Miss Diane King. Miss Diane King got so much love that, that she could really sell it and not run out. So shout out to her today. And, you know, and I have to make sure that I'm on point with Miss Diane King because Miss Diane King is like, like my second mama. So, you know, sometimes she'll call me out when I ain't right. So shout out to her. <laughs> so listen, I love y'all. I'm ready to pray for you and I got to let y'all go today. All right. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person who's watching us today. Help us, God, to get over ourselves. Help us not to allow the situation and circumstance that we've dealt with down through the years to continue to keep controlling us. You said in your word, whom the Son make free is free indeed. And so, Lord, I thank you for making us free today. Now, Father, help us to move forward in you and help us, God, to walk in that liberality that you've granted us. And I give you praise and I give you glory today. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, Father, we lift up my town, Itabena, Mississippi. I thank you, Lord, that Itabena is recovering from a fall and you're removing false leadership 
and granting new leadership today, and I thank you for it. Now, Father, I call the Delta blessed in Jesus' name. And, Father, we lift up the country of Belize, and we pray specifically for the country of Belize today. I pray your peace and prosperity over the country. I pray, I pray healing and deliverance over the country, and I pray your favor over the country now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, and I forgot to give a big shout-out to Miss Karen Yates this morning. Shout-out to her. Thank y'all so much. And Miss Marianne Stanley and my guy, Clint Powell, is on today. Shout-out to you, man. Hey, love you guys. Got to go. But listen, do me a favor. Get your seed in the ground today. Get it in the ground. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground today. Don't let the devil tell you that you cannot give. But get it in the ground today, all right? Uh, make sure you're part of our Christmas service this, this Friday morning at 9 a.m., just one hour of your time. Come on and be a part of that day. It's about Jesus Christ anyway. So y'all come on. I know you got a lot of gifts that, you, that you're going to be opening that day. You're going to be cooking a lot of food and everything. But come on. You, you can give the Lord one hour of your time. You can keep your PJs on that day. Have your cup of coffee. Get your tablet. Get your phone. Whatever you got to put me on your television screen. My wife and I. Hey, let's have church on this, I mean, on this Friday. Let's give God our best praise. He deserves it because everything is about him. So y'all come on and be a part and uh, let's glorify God together. We're only going to keep you an hour and that's it. And we're going to let you go. All right. So y'all be a part of that. All right. And thank you to everybody who's been downloading our church app. I looked at the numbers again. The numbers are going up. So thank y'all so much for joining us, uh, uh, for downloading our, our church app. You can do it uh, through um, the Google Play Store, the Apple Play Store or the Apple Store. Uh, you can download it on Amazon. I think they said Roku. You can download it. So please do us a favor. Go download the Kingdom Life Faith Center church app. You can keep up with everything that we do. On that church app is everything in your hands. I mean, you can watch our services live from that church app. You can go back and re-watch podcast messages and encouraging messages that will build you up. You can keep up with the events that we have. You can even sow your seed on the, uh, on the app. So please go check it out. You got everything in the palm of your hands or even on your tablet. So download the Kingdom Life Faith Center Church app. And please do that. Download it. And when you download it, turn on your notifications so you can be notified of the things that are going on in our ministry. So please do that. And uh, Treasure wanted me to make sure that I encourage you to uh, like, uh, uh, um, become followers of our Twitter account. I think she said our church Twitter account is... Uh, KLFC Church, KLFC Church. I think she said we only have like one or two followers or something on the church. So please, y'all go and um, follow us on Twitter at KLFC Church. Again, KLFC Church, follow us on Twitter. And also, um, go subscribe to our official YouTube channel. Our official YouTube channel is uh, the official YouTube channel of Kingdom Life Faith Center Church. Go subscribe to that. And turn your notification bell on on that too so you can be aware of things when they uh come about all right so please do that for us today and i think she said uh our instagram page as well uh our instagram page is uh kingdom life faith center church so please go turn that you please go uh you know subscribe to that or um, however you follow that i think it's what they say follow that so please do that and uh, we appreciate you already. We do appreciate you, all right? So uh, make sure you download the church app. Please make sure you download the church app. Everything you need is in the church app. There's a Bible on there. You can take notes. You can sow your seed. You can get the podcast. You can listen to everything. It's on there, on the, on the app. So please go get it, download it, all right? Hey, we got to go. We love y'all. Oh, I got to give somebody their day. Let me give somebody their day today. Today is my daughter. Ashley Perryman's day. Whatever Miss Ashley wants, she gets. Whatever Miss Ashley needs, gets supplied. Today is her day today. Today is my spiritual daughter Bam's day. Whatever Bam wants, she gets. Whatever Bam needs, gets supplied. Today it's her day today. And today also is Miss Tiffany Barnes' day. Whatever Miss Tiffany wants, she gets. Whatever Miss Tiffany needs, gets supplied. It's her day today. So y'all show them some love and some appreciation. It is their day. And to my wife, every day is your day, girl. When I wake up in the morning and I look in your eyes, I feel hypnotized and mesmerized by the beauty that emanates from your soul. Your love is all of that to the point it makes my heart go pitter, pat, pitter, pat. <laughs> Let me get out this day for I mess up. I gotta go. I love y'all. Love y'all. <laughs> See, I tell you how my brain works. I don't know how I get all this stuff from. I gotta go. <laughs>